from Los Angeles to a worldwide audience, this is Boaz Power TV, where we take your life to the next level. Now, internationally known speaker and author, here's Boaz. Hi, welcome to the Power Show. You are part of of the Power Nation, and I'm so delighted that you're here because here we share ideas that can improve your health, your relationships, your finances, and your career. And when people ask us, how's everything? How's life? How's business? One word with enthusiasm, unbelievable. Nobody will know what you're up to, but they'll think you're doing great. This is episode number 99 on Boaz Power TV, and I call this one a heady concept to guide torpedoes. As you may know, I like to share stories about people we hadn't even thought about and some amazing accomplishments that they were able to make happen because they opened their minds up to the possibilities. And I believe you are very creative. This story begins by somebody who was born, a lady who was born in Vienna in 1914. My father was born in Vienna. Her birth name, Hedvig Eva Maria Keisler. As a teenager, her interest in the theater led her to the famous Berlin acting school headed by Max Reinhardt. He was famous at the time. In 1933, at the age of 19, she exposed her acting skills and much of herself in a film called Ecstasy. She starred in that Czech film and due to the nude scenes, it caused an international scandal. Oh my, I know. Before long, she became famous. Fritz Mandel, the first of six husbands, also came along in 1933. It was upon the insistence of her parents that she married the prominent Austrian munitions tycoon. During their four-year marriage, she became an institution in Viennese society. She entertained and dazzled foreign leaders, including Hitler and Mussolini. Mandel took his wife everywhere, including meetings with his biggest client, which happened to be at the time the Nazi party. Her husband manufactured shells, grenades, and military aircraft. He had a special interest in control systems, conducting research in the field as his wife watched and learned. You know, we can, we can learn so much by just watching people. She watched and learned. Despite their Jewish background, Mandel sympathized with the Nazis. She, on the other hand, despised the regime and felt there was no future for Jews in Europe. One night, she left her husband and made her way to London. There she met Samuel Goldwyn, the Hollywood mogul. He gave her a new stage name and brought her to Hollywood. There the raven-haired beauty starred in several films and became a social fixture. It was in Hollywood that she met composer George Antheil. Antheil's parents were from Prussia, East Prussia. He was born in New Jersey in 1900. George studied music in Philadelphia and then pursued a career as a concert pianist in Europe. At first, he was in Berlin and then settled in Paris in 1923, becoming a top avant-garde composer of the time. One of his pieces, Ballet Minique, was scored for 16 player pianos, xylophones, and percussion. One version included one player piano, electric bells, airplane propellers, and a siren. It was in 1933 that he returned to the U.S. where he became a Hollywood film composer and a writer for magazines. One of his articles, written in 1939, dealt with his belief that war would soon erupt with Germany invading Poland, later Russia, and that the U.S. would be drawn into the conflict. His predictions were quite accurate. It was in the summer of 1940 that he met the subject of this column. He and she discussed the upcoming war and how they could support the Allied troops against Germany. She told him that she was considering quitting MGM and moving to Washington, D.C. in order to offer her services to the newly established National Inventors Council. Isn't that amazing to stop her career as a movie actress and go to Washington? They talked about torpedoes and how they were controlled by radio signals. That's what they talked about? Wow. All of the basic idea was not new. She had a new twist on it. Her concept was based on frequency hopping. Antheil, recalling the way he coordinated the 16 player pianos in his ballet Minique, came up with a device by which the frequency signals could be synchronized. Isn't this fascinating? The idea was designed to keep radio-controlled torpedoes from being jammed by the enemy and steering off course. 
She used her past knowledge of Nazi technologies while he used his expertise in player pianos. Together, their idea equated torpedo communication systems to the paper rolls in player pianos. You ever seen those rolls? They kind of move around and they make the keys work. The device used fluctuating frequencies and that was labeled as frequency hopping. It was impossible to jam. Even if the enemy could intercept any part of the message, they had no way of knowing the next part. On April 11, 1942, they submitted their secret communication system to the U.S. Patent Office. When the military received a copy of the patent, they saw the words player piano and discarded it. By 1962, the patent had expired. It was at that point that the U.S. military began looking at old communication ideas to see if there was any inspiration for new ones. And that's when they discovered the 1942 idea. This time the reception was quite different. The U.S. government eventually implemented it in classified communication services. The concept was installed on ships sent to blockade Cuba in 1962 and it became the concept behind the principal anti-jamming device used today in defense communication satellite systems. Incredible. The secret communication system became known as frequency hopping. When the concept was declassified some years later, private enterprise took it and ran. It eventually became the basis of 900 megahertz cordless phones, select garage door openers, and even Bluetooth technology. Can you believe this? In the 40s, some thought she was the most beautiful woman in Hollywood. As an actress, however, she was upstaged by heroines like Ingrid Bergman and Katherine Hepburn. However, she never wanted to be known as just a pretty face. Behind the facade was actually a very smart, some would say brilliant woman, which leads to the message of this column. Let's be careful not to judge people too quickly. There may be more to the story. Oh, by the way, when he brought her to Hollywood, Samuel Goldwyn gave Hedwig Eva Maria Keisler the stage name of Hedy Lamar. Can you believe it? How amazing. How amazing. If you like these messages, and by the way, here's the affirmation for this week's episode of Boaz Power TV, and it deals with this point about judgment, about judgment. I am careful not to judge people too quickly. There may be more to the story. You may want to write that down. I am careful not to judge people too quickly. There may be more to the story. And if you like these stories, and many people around the world find them to be very inspiring, please send five people you know to my website, boazpower.com, and get them to also subscribe to this free weekly broadcast of Boaz Power TV. Thanks for joining me. You are special. You are unique. You are destined for greatness. I see it in you. You are a champion. Have a powerful day. This has been Boaz Power TV. To comment, see other episodes, or to subscribe to this free broadcast, go to our blog at boazpower.com. That's boazpower.com. We're here to take your life to the next level.